Hello folks, Scott Grove here. Um, I had a request from one of my buddies. Um, his daughter uh, is going to be playing guitar um, for her um, school uh, talent show. And she wants to do the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, so I'm going to teach a version of that. Um, basically for an audience of one. If anybody else wants to learn this, yeah, sure, there's 3,000 different people teaching this all over YouTube. So I'm just here to teach it my way. Um, for the one girl. If anybody, like I said, anybody else wants to check it out, cool. But um, just know that it is for one person, and that's what it's all about. I'm doing a favor, and I'm more than happy to do it. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take this, put it down here, and show the guitar. Why? Because that's what we're playing it on. Um, anybody out there that has any kind of V-shaped guitars, or you know, one of these. Randy Rhodes shaped jobbies. Um, yes, the only way you can actually make them stay in your lap is wear a strap. Okay, so they don't go anywhere. Uh, okay, and the uh, young lady, she is using a Floyd Rose on her guitar, so she wants to incorporate that into the Star Spangled Banner, so I'll show ways of doing that. Um, I'm not showing anybody's version in particular. Hendrix did it in the key of E, um, slash does it in the key of whatever slash does it in that day, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm going to teach it in the key of G. Why? Because anybody that knows anything about guitars knows that um, if we're going to be specifically using a whammy bar and want to use it a fair amount or enough to really show off at a school talent show, then the best things to use whammy bars on are harmonics, meaning... Okay, so if you're in the key of E, like Hendrix, that does not play in well. So that's why I'm going to stick it in the key of G, so that there will be plenty of G harmonics. Fifth fret. The way to get harmonics, if you're not sure, kiddo, is to go to the G string. I'll be using the G string for most of these harmonics. Uh, so, okay, so for a G note, we'll be at the fifth fret. Put your finger directly above the fret, not behind it, not in front of it, but above it. Do not push down. Just touch it. You have to have distortion on to hear it really well. You touch it and let go. So you're not pushing down at all. And another G note is at the twelfth fret. Your double dots or whatever you have here. It's a lot easier to get that one. And the other one we'll be talking about will be the D harmonic, which will be at your 7th fret. Okay, so those are the harmonics that we'll be using. Again, they're just laid above the frets. You're not touching the frets. You're not pushing down at all. Just put your finger directly on top of the fret. Don't push. Hit it. It'll just ring like crazy. Then you can do whatever you want to with your Floyd Rose. Okay, now in the key of G. Okay, this is a long song, so everybody that teaches this has the tendency to get lost in the middle of it and have to go back and find their way through it, and I'm no different. You know, I've taught this song a million times, a million different ways. And yeah, just like people that go out there and sing it, you get lost in the middle of your song. Okay, so I'm going to get lost, you watch, uh, more than a few times. So. That's the main thing to watch out for is to kind of, if you know the words, sing them as you're playing them, you know, in your head, of course, okay? Because um, I'm probably not going to do that because I'm going to be explaining this to you. So I'll get lost and have to come back to it. So I'm just letting you know, yep, I'll screw up too. So what I'm thinking is the best way to do this and to think about it is take a regular F chord, like you know your F chord, your uh, B and E string are covered at the first fret on your E, B, e and B string, first fret, then second fret on your G string, and then third fret on your D string. We'll take that whole F shape, move it up two frets, so you're at G. Okay. Hey, we've already got half the song covered. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's basically what we're looking at. Um, you don't have to play this with the chord like that, because we do not want any notes ringing over on top of each other, like this. It just doesn't sound good. It sounds better 
Okay, and that is just knowing that you have the notes there and that they will look like an F chord. So you keep that F chord in your brain and not so much on the fingerboard. Okay, so when I say numbers from here on out, like I'll be going three, five, seven, you know, nine, ten, twelve, those will be the numbers of the frets. I'll say what string, like B string, three to five to seven to eight to seven. Okay, that's what I mean is what fret number you're going to be playing at. Okay, so it'll be like tablature if you're used to reading tab at all. Okay, and here's the way we do um, this song. I will do it basic at the beginning, and then we'll go back and grab all kinds of fun junk for the Floyd Rose and for some harmonics and some whammies and uh, some inflections. Hey, there's a word I haven't used since I was in school. Okay, which are just um, cool little ways of playing this song. So, um, to throw in some flash. How's that? Okay, so uh, beginning of this, just to get the actual whole song out of the way, will be exactly what I just did. Play that chord, start on your B string, go to the B string, okay, so you're playing the F chord, but moved up to the third fret, meaning starting there. So, B string, G string, D string, G string, B string, and E string. Okay, so that is that basically just playing straight up this way, then back down. Okay, now the first thing for us to do is get rid of that shape now, but just think of it in your head. Okay, so now just play it, third fret, B. Okay, so like you just did, or like we just did when we had the F looking chord there, but play them one note at a time, so it would be B string, third fret, G string, fourth fret, D string, fifth fret, then back to the third fret of the G, I'm sorry, four, fourth fret, third fret of the B, and third fret of the E. Okay, again, it looks just like this. You know how it sounds? Now let's just play it. Okay, and that is uh, the beginning. We're on our way. And if it becomes hard at any reason, at uh, any time, I mean, um, yeah, keep that chord down there for a little while until it gets ingrained in your brain. Ingrained in the membrane. <laughs> so you can do it that way if you want to until it gets really stuck in your head but then it's going to look cooler because check this out. Okay, half your battle is going to be the cool looking factor. So as soon as you can break away from the chord looking thing, let's do that, all right? Okay, so from there. Now we're going to go, um, this is going to be a slide using your ring finger from, this is all in the E string, going five to seven. Again, remember, that'll be fifth fret to seventh fret. So I'm gonna be using all numbers now. Five, seven, slide, so you hit it once, move it up to seven. Five, three, now to the G string, fourth fret, B string, number two, up to three. Okay, again, okay, that's five to seven on your E, five, three, two, again, five to seven, five, three, two, now we're going, okay, all this fun junk. So from the beginning, let me try it for my own sake. Like I just said, I will get lost. Okay, so that's all the further we have to go. <laughs> okay, so that is the way it goes. I had to remind myself, like I said, I do get lost and I get lost often. It happens when you get old. 
It happens when you're young. <laughs> okay, so again from the five seven back to five three fourth fret on the G second on the B and third fret. Okay. Nice slide. Now we play that note twice. Okay. And then we're doing that same slide again from five to seven on your E string. Five, three, two, just like we did before. Okay. So again, from seven, five, three, two. Now we're going to go, okay, you can do it this way, open, E, two, three, all on your E string, okay? Now open, meaning open E string, two, three, Again, on that three, and then the rest of that F shaped chord, okay? Now open, so you hit it twice on that three, and then finish it up. So from beginning we have Okay. And that is the first part. Luckily, the second part is exactly the same as the first part. Okay? Like I said, in a little bit here in another 20 minutes or so, we'll get to all the fun stuff. Okay, second part, uh, second verse, same as the first, which again. Then we get. this other fun junk. So um, we have, after the second part that we did, um, okay, we have, let's see, I even have to remember. <laughs> yeah, okay, so same thing, we do slide it from five to seven, Okay, that's just one quick note from five to seven on the high E string. Eight, then twice on ten, then down to seven. I'm sorry, down to eight. Okay, that's going eight, seven, five. And then building right back up, okay? So from five to seven. Eight, ten, ten, then Eight, seven, five, seven, eight, eight, then eight, seven, five, three, two. Okay, so that again was five to seven, eight, ten, ten, eight, seven, five, seven, eight, eight. Eight, seven, five, three, two. Okay. Okay, which will end up with that. Um, 
So that is that part. Okay, after you get down to that two, we have to go. Okay, this is um, nothing difficult, same notes we were playing before. Okay, so after we get down to the two. We're going to go. You can do this one of two ways. The way I just did from two. Or you can just go open two, three. Which most of you all want to do or young lady. So let's just go ahead and go open. E string. Two, three. Then fourth fret on your G. Two on the B. Three on the B. Okay. So from the... Then open two, three. Four on the G string. Two on the B string. Three on the B string. Then we have... Okay, so that's basically what we have left. Um, again, I'm in the middle of this thing. Where am I? Um, okay, from there. Okay, you can do this again a few different ways. Okay, so um, third fret on your B string three times on your third fret on your E string. Two. You could do them all open if you want, okay? Oh, see this that star spangled. Okay. Okay, so we have all this. Um, let's back up just a little bit. So, then, then we have, okay, so we'll do it the easy way, um, for now. Okay, so after we get back from the one thing, um, so from the three, one, da, da, two, open, uh, da. then on the word banner, it wave. Okay, we have to go up to the fifth fret. Okay, so if originally we were here, third fret on the B string. Oh, say. Spangled. Now from banner yet wave. Okay, don't worry about my voice right now. I'm not. <laughs> uh, on the word banner, you're going to go up to the fifth fret on your E string. Everything else could be on the E string for pretty much most of this. Okay, so I'm just going to name off the frets. Five, seven, eight, seven. Five, three, two. Okay, very simple. We'll make it harder later and cooler later. Okay, so from the. Now five. Okay, that is from five, seven, eight, seven, five, three. Two. Okay. Again, five 
and use different fingers. Use this, use these fingers if you can. Five, seven, eight, seven, five, three, three, two. Okay, so use those fingers if you can. Okay, again, so. Okay, now we have to go to the third fret on the B string twice. And once on the E string on the third fret. Five. Seven, eight, nine. I'm sorry, ten. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, it was um, my bad. Three, five, seven, eight, ten is what it's supposed to be. Again, sorry about that. B string, three, three on the E string, five, seven, eight, ten. Then three, five, seven, eight, five, and then back to three. Okay, so that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Okay, the very basic version. Um, I'll play it through one time. Uh, if you want to play along with this, me, or play along with me on this one. Um, after you've gone back through it a few hundred times. You can play exactly the basic version with me, which will be this, two, three. Okay, so there's basically the rough version. Again, just like I told you, I'll screw it up. If you have some iced tea, time to drink it. Okay, so now that you can actually rewind and fast forward this particular thing or click it on the timeline here at the bottom of your YouTube thingy, um, let's put in some fun stuff. Okay, from the beginning. Okay, that first G note here. Okay, when we finally get to it. I would suggest playing everything straight. Okay, just like I showed you. And again, put some vibrato on your strings, you know, just the... Okay, now that note there, that G note. Um, you can substitute that one for the same octave of a G note if you want to, which would be at the 12th fret. I showed you this at the beginning of the video. 12th fret, but using a harmonic. Okay, so you would end up having... Now we get to use the whammy bar. You can decide if you want to use that or not. It might be cooler later if you wait. Okay, again, these are just options. So the rest from here on out are nothing but options. I'll give you tons 
and tons and tons of options so that you can make up your own version but just use my little building blocks and suggestions or whatever and different variations that you can use <laughs> You can do the little sample whammy or the big one. And do it real quick, then. You go as crazy as you want to get. Okay, so this is up to you. Um, like Dad said, you have the Floyd Rose on the guitar. Um, let's use it, but let's don't overuse it, probably. It gets really old when you are whammy and all day long on that thing. Um, okay, so that is one option. The other one is to simply go to the note and just give it a little bit of whammy, which I think is more tasteful. Uh, the other stuff can come later and be more effective, actually, I think, um, in my own little brain. <laughs> okay, but whatever you want to do, like I said, it's your show. You do what you want. So I actually like... <laughs> Just a little bit of whammy. Then you have. You can either slightly whammy it there or also opt for the other um, note that I showed you. That is a D note. See? So that is a D note. Again, why I chose this key to teach it in. Because you have a D note right here, the seventh fret harmonic. Uh, to put in here if you want. Okay, so. Okay, so you can really go crazy here. So if you do go for the safe one, the first time around. Okay. And I actually don't care for that, but if you like it, cool. Um, I, would I would normally go ahead and go for the straight D note for now and whammy it down instead of the harmonic. That you have to have, which is a whole bunch of uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. That's pretty much a given, okay? So from the beginning, then whatever you want to do there, that is something you really want to add in, which is simply hammer on to pull off from the third fret to the fifth fret. many times as you want to do it but don't overdo it okay listen how many times I do it here okay let's, see. let's go from the beginning that's usually enough see that was only two times and down to the two. Okay. I snuck a third one in there. Now there is a good place to do it. I don't know if you know how to do a false harmonic, but what I opted to do there was. Um, When you do this, instead of ending back up at the 5th fret, which is a G note on your D string, I actually go to the open G string, okay, which can be very cool. See. Then open G string. That's a great place to put something in, but if you can know how to do what's called a pinched harmonic, Okay, that's where you do
Okay, so if you look on your guitar where the tw uh, 24th fret would be, you might have 24 frets. This one has 22. So here's 21st, 22nd would be about there, 24th would be here. If you basically play there and just hit it with the side of your pick and the side of your thumb at the same time, you'll get a harmonic, same as that one, but it's actually here, same as the fifth fret harmonic. Okay, so you can still hit that, but it's cooler if you can actually pull off that note. If not, hit the fifth fret harmonic. Okay, and just because it sounds cooler with that kind of a harmonic when you do your Floyd Rose whammy. Okay. Okay, so that's just kind of a cool thing to add right in there. And then right back before you go back into the same thing again. And then this time you can opt for some different variations of what you've already done the second time around because the first two, like I said, they're identical. So what do you have? Play it straight, probably. Slight whammies. like that, just hanging on different notes. Okay, when we do it, go up to that top part there. You can do whatever you want. You're at a high D right there. You can do the harmonic on the seventh fret. The elephant scream, which is doing basically um, hitting harmonics on your D string, G string, and B string. Pulling them all over the place. You could start with it bent down, hit the harmonics there. You know, do weird little noises like that um, to make it different. Okay, that's just going up. Again, instead of that D note. So look for all these different notes. Again, that's why I put it in G because you have G notes and D notes that you have all these harmonics that you can mess with. Okay, so when you get to that C, you basically can only go there, but you can wait around forever. Okay, you don't have to keep the flow of the song going. Okay, so if you went. be feeding back. I'm playing at low volumes now. Then You get up to there, it's really cool. Instead of just hanging on that D, um, let me grab a little bit of a gain here, throw it in. You 
go up and grab that high G note, 15th fret on your high E string. It's just kind of cool to add that in there. Okay, so, let's see. That's another one where I did a pre-bend with the whammy bar already bent down, grabbing the G, I'm sorry, the D string, G string, and B string, all with the pick. And that's a nice way to end it, and then turn towards your amp and let it feed back like crazy, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, another thing that is a cool, if you can get it to happen, um, it's a little strange. And this is a um, thing that plays tricks on your ears more than anything. <laughs> is um, when you went from okay, and the rocket's red glare. When you hit that note, if there's any way you can get like using your other fingers, and when you finally hit that note. And then you can reach behind and also hit that harmonic on the seventh fret with this finger, your first finger, at the same time that you've already done this one, okay? Huh. Okay, what will happen here is when I go to bend it, while you have this note playing on the high E string at the tenth fret, and if you hit the harmonic at the same time, so you have this one going, then hit the harmonic. So you've actually got two notes playing that are identical. What you end up having, or you can take, get rid of your pick, palm it really quick like this, grab both notes. You'll hear one note in the background that's actually going up, even though you're whammying down. You'll hear it, it's on the low side. It's kind of a low note, but it's going up. So, listen for the low note. Okay, don't listen to the stuff that's going down. Okay, so can you hear the low note coming up? It's just a neat effect. So if you can actually Okay, if you can grab both those notes and play them at the same time, it'd be great. There you can hear the one coming up quick. Okay, so you got one going up, one going down. It's just an optical illusion for your earballs, not your eyeballs. Okay, um, don't ask me how it's done or why it happens. It's just one of those things. Okay. Okay, and all the rest we've covered. So, um, more options of things to do. Okay, instead of going straight to a note, okay, use some bends. Okay, so if you know how to do the bends already, Let's add some bends in. Again, these are just for flavor. Um, I'm going to talk about 20 more minutes about this song. You've got the basics, and the rest of it is just fluff. Okay? And options. Okay? So the other options are to do bends to help change this up. Okay? We've got whammies. We've got harmonics. We've got the song down, the melody. Okay? So now... <laughs> So if you want to go, instead of that G note, go to G, or I'm sorry, F, on the B string, which is actually the 6th uh, fret, and bend it up to that G note, anywhere that you can in the whole song. Um, but not all the way through it, just here and there. So you have bends, 
you have whammies, you have vibrato, whether it be just a slight whammy, or just... Or you can even use your whammy bar, okay? There's the problem. Okay, you want to be in tune. Um, okay, you can actually... I got to unloosen my locking nut one time real quick. Yep, yeah, live on camera. Why? Because it needs it by George. <laughs> uh, that one isn't locked down too well, so I'll lock her down. I'll go a little past it. And lock it back up. Okay, we are locked in. Now let's tune up. Okay, so... You can actually go up to the seventh, I'm sorry, the sixth fret of your B string and yank back on your whammy bar instead of bending up. It looks cool. Or you can have your whammy bar back here and. Push down on it that way. and bring it back around. Whatever you want to do. In case they're doing that. See. Okay. So instead of doing that. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, so instead of... Do that. Okay, so you can add all these little things in. Okay, again, all that was was... Another band. If you happen to squall a note, again, a pinched harmonic. You hear one of those notes, whammy it. If you happen to do it by accident. If you hear one, whammy those notes. Okay? Okay, so if you hear one of those notes, Take advantage of it. If you do it by accident, who cares? Whammy that thing. It's what it's there for. Mm. Harmonic. <laughs> Just more ha ha hammer on. So if you want to go a la Hendrix a little bit, once you get up to a chord progression or a chord that you're happily uh, or halfway familiar with doing some soloing work, you can get up to the, you know you're in D, then you can actually do some stuff in D. Now you're in C. Then, 
Okay, you can do uh, on the gaze proof. You can start with the pre bend, which means because the next note is going to be gaze proof down to the seventh fret. Start with it bend already up, but only half step. And then of course you're going to go. Then. Try to get some feedback there if you can. Let's stop it. And then go up for that high note. Then. Then uh, something else besides just the. Which is a nice way to end it. Hear how that just comes in? Just. And then try to bend back, put your pickups in front of your speaker and let it feed back and go crazy. Um, a cool thing to do, just for um, effect, since you've got a Floyd Rose, is uh, right there, if you have a chance to flip it behind there, or put, is take advantage of that at the end, especially if you can get some feedback. You grab that Floyd Rose, either yank it up, or put it behind the guitar, pick up the guitar using this. I will show you this, just for fun, it's an 80s trick, but, of course, yes, I'm sitting on my booty, but, um, Pick up the guitar with the whammy bar. Because you're all done playing, you might as well go nuts with it. Okay, so you're all done playing. So that's just um, all kinds of fun you can have. Was that dang B string again? Let's get. Uh, I probably ought to fix that. Yeah, look at that. It's turned sideways. That would do it. <laughs> I'll fix this again. Give me two seconds. I'll be right with you, kiddo. Okay. Tighten it up, and then I'll actually put the uh, locking nut in the proper place here in a second. Okay, so we're back, and let's get you a few more ideas. I told you I'd give you some more, so let's get some more. And more things to mess with. Um, there are going to be, if I don't know if you know how to do any tapping or not, um, being the... The Van Hagar stuff, whatever. But you can always throw some of that in if you know how to do it. If not, if you don't know how to do it, um, here it is, simple as pie. Um, in the key of G, which we are, um, the easiest thing to do is the hammer-ons. Um, the most used one would, would be on the B string, third fret, and then hammering on, pulling off, with using your ring finger, to the sixth fret. Trying to get that motion going, reach up with your middle finger or whatever finger you can. Most people use their middle fingers and going to the seventh fret. All that is is that. Every other time you hammer that note onto the seventh fret of the B string. And as you get faster, and then you can move that ring finger here that is going back and forth on your 6th fret down to the 5th fret, down to the 4th fret, back up, you know, but keep everything else where it's at for now, okay? But this is cool enough for somewhere in the middle of the song. You 
can do this finger. Okay, so that it could be like. Um, Okay, so that just gives you an idea. Okay, for later on when you even got... When you get way up there and you're looking for something to do, that can be... Okay, so that's just more things to think about you could toss in there. So, um, you have the bends. Hammer-ons. Whammy. Harmonics. And then... up to that big G, because it's cool, and it screeches and scratches and squalls. Yeah. You can go down to the two, and then big one, and you know you're done, so break all the strings you want to. I've done this before. I bring along wire cutters with me, and after I'm going, they're going nuts and crazy. If you have a set of strings on you're just tired of using and you want to use it for this one school thing, I've done this at the end of a gig, you better have a, in case you get an encore, <laughs> better have a spare guitar around. But I actually bring wire cutters with me and cut off all my strings at the end of a song. So I'm sitting there going, then I grab the wire cutters, bring them out while it's feeding back, and start snipping off one string at a time, crank, crank. And it just makes all kinds of crazy noises through your amplifier until finally all the strings are gone. Then you just run over, sh or just set your guitar down, shut off your amp, walk off stage, and the crowd goes wild. If they bring you back for an encore, you better have a spare guitar. But it's just something cool to think about because you're doing this song one time, right, for the school. So, you know, it's, it's a set of strings. Who cares? Cut them off. <laughs> You don't have to practice cutting them off, that gets expensive, but it's a cool thing to do. You don't have to kick your amp or break your guitar, but you can sacrifice a three or four dollar set of strings and cut, a, cut them off. They look cool just flopping all over the place. Watch them though, they might fly back and you know, slice your throat or cut your eyeball out. Or I've never had it happen, but you know the thing is there, so I might as well put a disclaimer on there that yes, you might be impaled or killed doing this. Um, so. Uh, do not try this at home. Only try it at school. Okay, so those are just a bunch of things you can toss in with it. Like I said again, um, turn up your amp to the point of feedback if they'll let you, because feedback will be your friend. And like I said right now when I'm making this video, my wife's asleep, otherwise I would just turn on tons of feedback and we'd have a ball at this, but you get the basic ideas. So there you go. Um, I know you don't, you don't want to see this ugly mug of mine. I don't want to either. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm, I'm still pretty at damn near 50 years old. Me and my double chins. Ooh. <laughs> so anyway, I hope that helps um, with your Star Spangled Banner again. It's not Hendrix's version. It's not Slash's version. It's nobody's version. It's just my interpretation of um, the song and probably the easiest way for you to be able to play it for your school and to be able to use the whammy which you know your dad said uh, that you really wanted to use and always carry around that's what I love about these old guitars from the 80s they had a nice place right here on the back of the headstock to keep all your tools back here so, so when things go awry as they did a few times in the video but that's half the fun you know ask Hendrix what fun is that being in tune <laughs> But I hope that helps with um, 
you know, the whole experience, no pun intended, the Jimi Hendrix experience doing the Star Spangled Banner. But anyway, um, lots of ideas, use what you want, whatever works for you. That's why I didn't say, hey, just do it this way. Um, use some of those, none of those, um, but practice it a million times. I know you will. Uh, you had to do this, I think, in November, so good thing that it's, what is this, October 27th or 28th when I'm making this, so I'm getting it done, hopefully in time for you to practice it. <laughs> okay, so I don't mean to laugh because I hope you have plenty of time to really get this uh, nailed down, and if you get to um, film this, please post it or um, email it to me or whatever if you would. I'd love to see a copy of it, put it on my website or whatever. It would just be cool. And then, of course, if you're going to do this song, man, you know, have some fog all over the stage if, you know, the school let you or tease your hair up like in the 80s and paint half of it pink and half of it green or whatever. Just have a ball. Like I said, if they'll let you turn it up to the point of feedback, um, that's what makes the song sound Hendrixy. You know, the more feedback, the better. Okay? So, again, um, pop, thanks, and young lady, I hope you do a smash-up job at the school, okay? And if you have any questions, um, Dad knows how to find me and email me, and I'll hook you up with some more video answers if you need them. Okay? Best of luck. Bye-bye.